Michael Catherman, Catman. He was our class, class nine. Hey, you're getting there. Let's try that again. He was our class, class nine. That's how he lived, that's how he should be known. He was my field training partner. He was my beat partner. But more than anything, he was my friend. We're here for him now. And he doesn't want us to be sad. I know it's hard. He wants laughter. He wants us to rejoice. In my heart, he's telling me to do the only thing I knew how to do when we were together. Talk smack. Have some fun. Tell some stories. Because that's who he was. In the academy, class nine. Catman was known for many things. Huge, goofy smile. Hilarious, have you in stitches. A smile as big as a grand piano. But that's what, that wasn't what he was known for by all of us. When we all sit in circles and we talk about what we remember, he was our slowest jogger. Mile and a half, back of the pack. Three mile, where's Catman? God forbid when we did our seven mile treks, like waiting for a train to nowhere. <laughs> you see, Catman wasn't built to jog. I know these pictures that you've seen, they show a lot. I wish I would have had these before. But they still don't do him justice. Catman had a big caboose on him. And legs. He could walk into a redwood tree forest and be the envy of everyone. <laughs> Every PT day, Catman was in the back. He ran, his head moving side to side like a bobblehead doll. It was the funniest thing to watch. A few of us would finish first, look around. Okay, I'll take that back. All right. Those guys finished first, some of us finished in the middle. But we'd go back for them, because that's what a team does. You never finish alone. And there'd be Catman, right in the back with that funny, goofy smile. And he always made jokes. I'm built for torque. I'm built for power. I'm a sprinter, not a jogger. When you're in the academy, you're sizing each other up because you really don't know each other. That's where you become one. So every time we'd run back and see Catman running and hear those jokes, we just thought they were jokes. And then we had sprint day. My God. 100 pound dummy drag, it's like watching a bear carry a kitten. 100 meter dash, 400 meter dash, lightning, turn on a dime. We have a six foot wall that we all figure out how to get over. I don't think he ever touched the top. It's true. For being one of the shorter guys in our academy, he had the highest vertical leap. The boy was built for power. We said goodbye to the academy and he and I were told we'd be partners. That's a huge promise. But after seeing what he could do, I had a problem. How am I gonna keep up? Catman was kind. He knew he was a mentor. He brought me aside and said, hey, let's go out. Let's do things together, let's meet each other. So he took me to go play all these events. And I knew I had to show him I could compete. 
First, he took me to play basketball. Wish I would have known he was a collegiate basketball star. Never forget, first day of the game, or first play of the game, I'm going, ball, 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 ball. He throws the ball at me. He hit me so hard, I fell over and rolled my ankle. I had to sit in the bleachers and suck on water with ice on my foot and just root him on. When we were in FTO, he always said, hey, if it goes down, we need to be ready. We need to be trained. So he invited me to go and do some martial arts and to fight. My God, I wish I had that picture before doing that. We'd take time into shift. We'd go and put wraps on, gloves on, go to the second floor of the parking garage. I figured, you know what? I'm taller. I got reach. I'll just jab and move. Every time I came to, <laughs> he was sitting there looking at me, laughing, a goofy smile. He took great delight in telling me the name of the punch, kick, submission, annihilation that I had endured. And they all had funny names, names that resembled him. Superman punch, flying roundhouse ninja kick. And there's some other ones I can't remember because I lost the brain cells. But it wasn't just there. It was at work. When we were in patrol, I would take the face page. I would interview the victim and get the suspect information. Catman would just go out and get the suspect. This weekend, we were talking about some of the capers he and I had, messes, if you will. And I'll never forget, we were sitting there off of Berryessa one night. I had arrested somebody for one pill of ecstasy. Crime of the century. But I'm sitting there dangling my booking sheet at Catman. What you get? What you get? Because you got to talk that smack. One hour left, end of shift. Catman looked at me, he's like, okay, I got you. He took off. Next thing you know, in that same shift, he arrested seven people in a burglary crew. He raided a house with a clandestine ID and meth lab. <laughs> During the arrest, he was Catman. Stern, dedicated. This weekend, I found out that he had called his mama. And he called mom and said, Mom, Mom, this is the biggest bust of my career. We'd only been cops for three months. I see him now, and it's clear to me. It's clear to me our roles, his and mine. The boy was built for power. He was my superstar. And I was his cheerleader. I see him in all the pictures. I see him in everything he's done and he is and what he meant to me. And I got to sit on the bleachers and watch the game of his life and watch that beautiful man compete. And I am a better man for it. April, Josh, Jason, Tom, Diana, Nate, thank you. Thank you for letting me watch the greatest game on earth and letting me be a part of it. I love you, Catman. <laughs>